Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to make a domino effect using rigid body simulation. First, let's model and arrange the dominoes using Blender's geometry nodes. Press Shift A and add a path curve. Switch the timeline editor to the geometry node editor. Click the new to create a geometry node modifier and rename it Domino. Press Shift A and add an instance on points node. Place it between the input and output nodes. Next, we need an object to instance on the curve's control points. Add a cube node and connect it to the instance node. You'll see four cubes appear as the curve currently has four control points. Adjust the cube's dimensions. Set X to 0.2 and Z to 1.5. For better visuals, go to the viewport shading menu, enable cavity and set the type to both. To increase the number of instances on the curve, add a resample curve node after the group input node. This node creates more control points. By default, it adds 10 instances along the curve in count mode. If you change the count to 5, only 5 instances will appear. Switch the length mode to control instancing based on distance. Set the length to 0.8 and the curve will automatically compute how many objects fit at 0.8 meter intervals. To extend the curve, go to the viewport and press tab to enter edit mode. Select the last control point and press numpad 7 for the top view. Press E to extrude the curve. As we extend the curve, Instances are added automatically based on its length. Currently, the instances don't align with the direction of the curve. To fix this, add a curve tangent node to calculate the curve's direction at each control point. Next, add a align Euler to vector node. Connect the tangent output to the vector input and the rotation output to the instance rotation input. That's it. By default, the local X axis align with the curve. You can change the axis if needed. Switch to object mode and go to the modifiers tab. When you try to apply the geometry node modifier, you'll get an error message. If you are sampling cubes along a curve with the instance on points node, you need to use realize instances node to make the geometry real. Otherwise, Blender won't be able to convert the instances into geometry. Add a release instances node before the group output node. Then, go to the viewport, right-click, and convert to mesh. That's it. Switch the geometry node editor to timeline editor. Switch the edit mode, press P key and separate by loose parts. When you return to object mode, you can select each domino individually. Rename the collection to dominoes. To select all dominoes, right-click on the collection and choose Select Objects. Then, right-click and set the origin to Geometry. So, each domino has its origin at the Geometry Center. Alright, let's add the rigid body simulation to create the domino effect. With all the dominoes selected, Go to the object menu, choose rigid body and add an active rigid body. When you play the simulation, you'll see the dominoes fall straight down due to gravity force. 
Next, add a plane and scale it up. Press M to move to plane to another collection. Switch to edit mode, press E to extrude it slightly and give it thickness. Go back to the object mode, select the dominoes and move them slightly above the plane. Then select the plane, go to the Physic Properties tab and add a passive rigid body. Now when you play the simulation, the plane will stay in place and the dominoes will collide with it. To have an accurate and stable simulation, go to the Scene Properties tab, under the rigid body, increase the number of simulation step. Now let's add an animated character to push the first domino and start the simulation. I'll use a Mixomo animation for this. If you'd like, you can watch my tutorial on importing and combining Mixomo animations using the top link. Go to the file menu and import the animated character in FPX format. Press M to move the character and armature to the collection too. Adjust its position, rotation and scale so it kicks the first domino. Add a cube object. Press M to move the cube to collection tool. Adjust its position, rotation and skid so it fits to the right foot. Go to the Constraint tab, add a child of constraint. Select the armature as the target object and the right foot bone as the sub-target. Click the Set Inverse button. Go to the Physic Properties tab and add an active rigid body. Enable the animated option so the cube can be controlled by the animation system. Play the simulation to see the result. There we go. The simulation currently ends at frame 250. To extend it, set the timeline's end frame to 500. Then, in the Scene Properties tab, under the Cache section, Set the simulation's end frame to 500 as well. Play the simulation again. If you set the speed value to 2, the simulation will play twice as fast. You can also hide the cube in the viewport and render. In the Outliner editor, disable the cube in both the viewport and render output. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial.